Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we've got this product from NetAc. It's an NV2000, which is basically an NVMe based solid state drive with read speeds up to 2,500 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 1,000. It is classed as a value drive and we do have links for this product in the description just below. You can find out the latest prices there as well. Are you looking for a great networking solution? Well, Tender has it all. Finding your BT router no longer has the power? Then try one of these from Tender. Hell yeah! Is the Wi-Fi on your laptop not working and you need a discreet solution? Well then get this from Tender. Hell yeah! Finding the kids can't get Wi-Fi in the bedroom and they're making your life miserable? Well you need to get one of these from Tender. Oh hell yeah! Looking for a low cost solution to get internet into your home office? Then you need to get some of these from Tender. Hell yeah! For all your networking needs, trust Tender. Hell yeah! Okay, this is the box. As you can see, it says it's a NVMe M.2 drive. It's a SSD, which is solid state drive, obviously. PCIe Gen 3 times 4 that means third gen which is pretty much compatible on all modern day boards which it shouldn't be an issue with that and the size is 2280 uh, it gives you tells you it's a NetAc you can see the drive just inside the plastic film there 2500 megabytes per second on there for that's the read speed it doesn't mention the write speed the rest of the box is pretty pretty plain there is a lot of information and really small writing on the back which I'm not even going to look into because it's that small but basically basics of the model is, it is obviously M.2 NVMe based, not SATA based, so obviously that will work in an M.2 slot. It reads up to 2500 megabytes per second, write is up to 1000, dimensions is 80 by 22 by 3.58 which is pretty standard for an SSD, and the MTBF which is the mean time between failure is 1.5 million hours. Okay, so this is everything what's inside the box. You've got plastic, obviously, what the actual drive came in to stop it falling out and so forth and bumping around. You've got some screws as well. This is obviously to screw it into your board, into the M.2 socket, or the, the holder, what holds it in place, should we say. You've also got a manual here, but when we say manual, it is basically three bullet points in English and the rest is all different languages, so it is multilingual. Would have been nice to have a QR code instead of that. I'm not sure if it's uh, really needed. And to be honest with you, a lot of that you could have easily written on the back of the box if it's not already written there anyway. Okay, so you've got the drive itself. There's not much to really look at in all honesty. You've got a sticker on here that tells you the size. It's got a couple of serial numbers and barcodes. And then you've got a few chips on that side. There's not a lot to look at. No heat sinks or anything like that. The reverse side is pr pretty plain as well. There isn't a lot to see. So you're not really missing much out, to be honest, on the design. Obviously, if you're putting it inside a case, the chance you're going to see much of it is unlikely. And because of the speeds, it's not going to need a heat sink anyway. Okay, just in case you're new to fit in an NVMe drive or an M.2 drive, basics is on your board, hopefully you should have a M.2 socket, which is either there, there, could be in different places, some have two, some have one, some have four, it really depends on the motherboard. You have to make sure your socket does support NVMe drives, otherwise it will not fit. If it only fits SATA, which is SATA based drives, it will not fit. Okay, so what you have to do is make sure there isn't a screw in this little riser here. And if there isn't, away you go. You basically get the drive, it goes in at a slight angle, and you push, and it pushes in. And then you push down the back end, you get a small Phillips screwdriver. If you're not sure what Phillips is, it's the one with the cross head on it. You get the screw, one of the screws provided, you push the drive down. And then the little hole where the riser is, you screw it in. Some motherboards may have a different me mechanism. It might be a lever what pulls round and so forth. But that's the basics. Once it's in, it's done. And again, make sure that your power is off on your computer when you're doing this. You've got it unplugged just to make sure. Because the last thing you want to do is do that while the machine is running.
Okay, first of all, we're using a i9 processor for this test. It's a 12900K processor, which is an i9. We're using the MSI Pro Z698 motherboard, as well as 32 gig of RAM. Our main drive, what we have Windows installed on, which is Windows 11, is a Lexar drive, which runs at over 7,000 megabytes per second on the read and over 5,000 on the write. The NetAC drive we are testing today is rated at doing 2,500 on the read and 1,000 on the write. From the first test we did, which is Atto, you can see here the read went up to roughly 1,980 megabytes per second. So nearly 500 megabytes lower than quoted. But the write speed is basically the complete opposite. It went up to 1,480, which is basically 480 megabytes more than they actually quoted. So the read is slightly slower, the write is slightly faster. Using Crystal Disk Mark, similar sort of thing. So we've got 2,128 on the read, which is roughly 350 slower than what was quoted, but 1,571 on the write, so it's 571 faster than quoted. So you lose some you win some i suppose so but as you can see there that's not too bad really considering it is a value drive you probably find that the larger drives like the 500 gig uh, one terabyte and so forth will be obviously more realistic speeds or should i say better speeds so you tend to find the bigger the drive the better they perform on average temperature wise we did run at 40 degrees it says but that is actually false it's been that temperature all the way through the testing from when i first put it in uh, when it was stone cold to now when it's slightly warm and it still says 40 degrees but it's not going to get up to really high temperatures because it doesn't go fast enough basically so you're not going to have to worry about uh, anything like the temperatures we are going to copy over now to do a file transfer test from our fast lexar drive uh, it's a folder which is 98.9 gigabytes which is 1047 files that's 1047 files and we're going to copy and paste that onto there we are going to run the timer though uh, while we do it so you can uh, no, we don't want to rate this so you can actually see how long it physically takes to copy that as well as the actual speeds uh, it's going at while it's doing it so let's start that off any second so all we need to do is right click press copy press play on the timer and paste on there okay it's going to be a couple of seconds out because of the, my delay has been a human being but it gives you a rough idea and you can see there the transfer speeds are starting off at roughly 1100 to 1300 megabytes per second which is pretty good actually it's not far behind the actual write speed uh, what's uh, uh, we were getting on the test but it's still a lot faster than the right speeds that we quoted on their website so that's pretty good so I'll come back in a few seconds when this testing has finished okay as you can see the copying is nearly done we're at 96 percent you can see it has slowed down quite a bit towards the end that's because it's copying the larger files now larger files do take a long time especially when we're talking about large files in 5, 10 gigabytes sort of sizes and it's taken a total of roughly 3 minutes and 22 seconds to do the copy so that's not too bad in all honesty now if we actually do the other way around so we are actually copying from that drive to our other drive uh, we're going to be testing the read speed now so that last test was the write speed because we were writing the information onto the netis or the netac drive we're now going to be copying it from the netac drive onto the main pc but what we do first is rename this drive or rename the folder should we say and we'll just call this exactly the same but number two on the end that's stops us having any cache issues where basically because it's already on the drive it thinks it's there and it's going to basically uh, go oh it's already there i'm not going to copy it properly and it gives us false results so we're going to go the other way now so let me copy that and stop the timer restart and then paste so that's going the other way now and as we can see here it's going starting off at around about 900 a thousand megabytes per second this again is the read speed now not the write it is going a little bit higher now but what we'll do is come back at the end of the test and see how it's done 
Okay, as you can see, we're at over 80% now. This time, because we are copying from it, this is reading from it, we're finding the graph is more consistent all the way through. While we didn't have such high speeds, we didn't have any of the low speeds either. So on average, it is copying the information over really, really, really quick. And as you can see, roughly 1 minute 43 seconds so that gives you a rough idea so it's a lot quicker copying which is reading information off of the drive than copying stuff onto it so that shows you the difference between the read and the write speed so the write being a bit slower it was a bit faster in some places but on average slower while the read speed was more consistent uh, but a little bit slower but over time it came out on top which is how it should be so overall this drive would i recommend it well obviously who knows how long they're going to last they do come with a good warranty which is always good on any drive uh, i've used some of the netac products before without any issues so i don't foresee any issues going down that route the problem is, is obviously time will tell but from initial testing like this we've got no problems with it it does everything it says on the tin a little bit slower on the reads but faster on the writes which actually averages out a bit and is actually uh, I prefer more than having the reads really fast and the writes really slow so that's actually pretty good to be honest with you but even saying that the speeds it took to copy the information 100 gig in less than two minutes is nothing to sneeze about to be honest with you so yeah I can't do anything but recommend this product thank you for watching this video everyone it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end please make sure you subscribe like comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams it does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time